Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I just felt compelled to say this because I'm getting real tired of the way in which people treat one another. I'm tired of the way people who claim to be Christians treat one another. And I'm especially tired of people who say, I don't need the church to be right with God. All throughout the New Testament, nothing could be further from the truth. It actually says in the book of Hebrews, do not forsake the gathering together as some are in the habit of doing. Now, I understand, but there have been people who are preachers who have fallen and who have hurt people very greatly. I understand that there are people in church congregations and buildings all across the world that have hurt people. But you cannot blame Jesus, God, or his church for the acts of some individuals. And really what we're doing is we're pointing a finger at other people based upon an idea that we have. What it all comes down to, it, life is either about one of two people, God or you. And most of our disappointment, the majority of our disappointment within the church stems from our own selfishness. I'm really honestly, uh, I truly believe that with all my heart. It talks about godlessness in the last days. Um, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, he writes this, But know this, difficult times will come in the last days, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, without love for what is good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the form of godliness but denying its power. Avoid these people. Now, why does he write that? Because he knows the nature of humanity, because he is one. He was one. He was a person who held to tradition. He sought to stand out, uh, to, to stamp out the church. The Apostle Paul will admit in some of his letters that he was once opposed to the church and everything it belonged to, everything it stood for. And then he had an encounter with Jesus Christ, and it completely, 100% made him someone new. He stopped going by his Hebrew name, Saul, and went by the name given to him in the Greek-speaking world, Paul, because he so believed in who he was in Christ Jesus, he needed a new identity. Following Jesus should transform us 100%. It should change us. We are going to face obstacles. We're going to face false teachers. We're going to face false brothers and sisters. We're going to face those things. But what we need to do, and I'll let you read 2 Timothy chapter 3 on your own. You should. It's a book that outlines what's going on today. Paul's solution for all of this is to point towards Scripture. He says, in fact, all those who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Verse 12. Evil people and imposters will become worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, he's talking to Timothy, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed. You know who has taught you, and you know that from childhood you have known the sacred scriptures which are able to give you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out or inspired by God. It is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be completely equipped for every good work. You see, how do we face these problems of God in the church? We get into the Word of God. It's not going to be some preacher. It's not going to be some brother or sister who judgmentally looks down their noses at us. It is through the Word of God. Test everybody who claims to come from God by the Word of God. God is consistent. God is capable. God is able. God has fulfilled his promises. He has never backed down from them. He has done everything he said he's going to do, and there is more yet to come. And if God has consistently throughout the history of man made good on his word, he will not fail now. So test. Test by the word of God.
Romans 12, chapter 2 is one of my favorite verses. You've heard me quote it before probably. That uh, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may know what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. We are transformed through the word of God so that we can know the will of God. We need to stop posturing. We need to stop complaining, stop whining, stop picking at each other, stop hurting one another, stop having these silly, petty disagreements. If there is something that a brother or sister in Christ disagrees with us on, as long as it is not uh, um, against the word of God, put aside the differences and agree in the Lord. It is time for us to be the church, to be a united body, everyone being a different part of the body, having a different, unique gift and purpose and perspective in the body and allowing God to transform us through his Holy Spirit, uniting us under the headship of Jesus Christ. Your problems with God and the church have nothing to do with God and the church. It has everything to do with you. Instead of having your expectations for how things should go, go into God's word. Seek first him and his kingdom. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Seek after God. Seek relationship with God and with brothers and sisters in Christ. Seek to be built up daily. Make everything you do, whether it's shopping or being a husband or a wife or a student or, or a, a son or a daughter or, or a, a worker, a laborer, whatever it is God has called you to do, make it all about God and you won't have time to think about how miserable you are. The joy that transcends all understanding, the peace that transcends all understanding doesn't come from you or I. It's not by the labors and the works we do. It has come only through the submission and complete surrender to Jesus Christ. Give up your power and your rights and allow God to, to, to transform you. But stop blaming other people. If God doesn't work for you, just know that he is not your servant. He is not hired by you. We submit and we honor and obey God, not the other way around. You're either serving God or yourself. And I'm not trying to sound harsh, but I'm praying. I'm praying that you're hearing what I'm saying. Submit fully to God. Trust in his leadership and allow him, not follow the human beings like myself and others within the church. Allow God to transform you and allow God to help you develop the relationships in your life. But stop pushing your expectations on other people. I'm praying for you. And I'm hoping you understand this message. And if you disagree with what I'm saying, feel free to comment. I want to hear what you have to say. But let's make this year all about Jesus. Let's center everything from the most mundane, eating, sleeping, drinking, shopping, whatever we do. Focus on Christ. In your relationships, loving your husbands or your wives or your boyfriends or your girlfriends. Focus on Christ. In loving your children or your neighbors or your friends at school or whoever else, focus on Christ. Put him at the center. And I promise, while you will face trials and tribulations and persecutions, you will never be disappointed in Jesus Christ. God bless you.